Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending our session. Our topic today is using Ryan White case management standards to support status neutral service delivery to PrEP patients. Our presenting team members today are Andrew Wilson, who is the Project Connect Program Director. Ismael Cruz, our Project Connect Program Manager, and me, Akosia Addo, Director of our Case Management Program. Before we dive into today's topic, I want to share a few patient profile highlights with you. About 26% of our patients are between the ages of 40 and 49. We have about 50% who report not having health insurance, 60% fall under 300% of the federal poverty level, and about 85% of our patients have an undetectable viral load. We offer primary HIV medical care in our clinics. We also provide emergency housing assistance to patients. We host educational and support events for people living with HIV and the general community at our empowerment center. We also facilitate interventions to formerly incarcerated persons or previously released um, inmates. And we also offer support services. Currently, we are conducting 17 clinical research studies. Prism Health North Texas has six locations in North Texas. We also have one team member who is hosted at Dallas County Health and Human Services Sexual Health Clinic. Our agency locations are in communities that often lack integrated patient care. Patients can access all of our locations by public transportation. And just recently, last year in 2019, Prism Health North Texas became the North Texas Regional Partner of the South Central Texas AIDS Education and Training Center Network. So with this partnership, we're now increasing and strengthening the HIV healthcare workforce through training, education, and capacity building. The programs and services we offer here at PRISM are centered around promoting integrated patient-centered care. We offer behavioral health services, HIV sexually transmitted infection prevention, HIV medical care, medical and non-medical case management services, pharmacy, services for recently released or previously incarcerated persons, and we also have a research program. We provide an integrated care and HIV medical care home for our patients. Patients who are negative as well as patients who are HIV uh, positive. Our programs and services support status neutral service delivery meaning we have a path to care and services for patients who are HIV positive and a path to care and services for patients who are at high risk for HIV. For our learning objectives today, we will present how we apply Wine White Care Standards to a patient-centered integrated HIV prevention program. We will also discuss how we translate relevant tools developed to assist people living with HIV, like the SAM, the Systems Acuity Measurement Scale, Integrated Care Plans, and Counter Notes and Risk Assessments, and focus on how we're using these tools to support people at risk of acquiring HIV. For our last objective today, we will introduce a comprehensive PrEP program into an, into an existing integrated HIV care system that includes case management, behavioral health, and housing. Let us now focus our attention on how we engage patients in case management. Our case management program is funded by the Texas Department of State Health Services through Dallas County Health and Human Services. With the state standards of care, there are key activities we must provide for patients. These are the initial assessment of needs, development of a comprehensive individualized care plan, coordination of services required to implement the patient's care plan, client monitoring to assess the efficacy of the care plan, and periodic evaluation and adaptation of the care plan. It is important to note that these key activities help us set the minimum standards for service delivery to our patients. 
So here at PRISM, the patient's care and experience really begins with our testing and education program. At the welcome or intake appointment, the case manager completes all Ryan Y eligibility documentation and establishes the care plan with the patient. If the patient presents with case management needs, the, ca uh, the patient is now assigned to a long-term non-medical case manager who will help the patient and continue to monitor the care plan and referrals. The assigned case manager working with the patient will complete the patient's birth month update, half birth month eligibility update, and help the patient access services in hopes of graduating from the program. Upon program graduation or closure, if a patient needs case management services, the patient can re-engage in case management. So the goal is to really facilitate access to support services. And by achieving this, we are able to help the patient stay in medical care and work towards achieving viral suppression. Now let's talk a little bit about, <clears throat> excuse me, let's talk a little bit about how we have designed our encounter log template to document our time with patients. The design of the log facilitates successful documentation of case management activities. Uh, within the log, we have a few features that identifies key assessment areas. The key assessment areas are required and they're highlighted as a visual reminder to the case manager during the documentation process. We also have a section within the encounter log that allows the case manager to document reportable activities and non-reportable activities. Reportable activities are submitted to Dallas County for possible reimbursement. The template also allows for case managers to put incomplete logs on hold. And what I mean by incomplete log is as the day begins, the case manager is able to hold the log, work with the patient and service providers throughout the day, and the case manager is able to sign the complete log at a later date. Our case management services are designed to help the patient access services and care. Case management supervisors can append the submitted log or add additional details to the log or even retract the log if a case manager submitted the log with errors. In case of an emergency or conditional eligibility, we also have 30 days to work with patients in order to provide all of the required eligibility documents to avoid any gaps in receiving Ryan White funded services within the community. Now let's take a look at how we document our notes to support our encounter log. The encounter note template captures case management session details. So the log details our time and the encounter note details the content of the session. The encounter note outlines the primary purpose or the intent of the encounter. It also outlines the action items identified for both the provider and the patient to facilitate access to services. So setting these expectations for the case manager and the patient holds each person accountable to work towards helping the patient to achieve their care plan goals. The encounter note displays details of all identified needs the care plan in the care plan. The case manager uses this documentation as a foundation for their care plan. I want to highlight that we do have treatment adherence as one of the key assessment areas. However, our case managers do not complete treatment adherence plans. The case managers help patients identify any barriers to their treatment adherence plans. If a patient has a need for items like a pill box, a calendar, or an alarm clock, um, just so they can use as a medication reminder, the case manager is able to help. The treatment adherence plan um, also allows our case managers to ask basic questions about the patient's ability to follow their prescribed treatment or follow the guidance they've been given by their medical case manager, their nurse, or their medical provider. If there is a need, the case manager is able to make a referral to the MCM or to the medical provider. Now let's talk a little bit about 
some of the key assessments we use in our case management program. Here we are presenting three assessment tools we use in case management. We have a system security measurement scale, substance abuse mental illness symptom screening tool, and a behavioral risk assessment. So these screening uh, and assessment tools give us a positive or a negative response after the case manager helps the patient complete them. The case manager is able to provide the appropriate support to the patient based on the results of the assessment tool. If the result is negative, there is no intervention required. If the result is positive, the case manager can offer uh, the patient a referral to a program. Patients may already be engaged in the program and may choose to decline the referral. Now let's take a look at how we structure our documentation in our electronic medical record system. Our case managers use the SAM acuity skill, which we just talked about, to help identify unmet needs. The assessment tool helps the case manager and the patient set a foundation for working on their care plan. The higher the patient's needs, the higher their acuity level. The goal is for the patient's acuity or the level of their need for case management to decrease as the case manager continues to assist the patient to get access to care. Here's a little bit of information about our care planning process. For our non-medical case management care plan, the key components we identify within the care plan are the patient's needs or the problem statement, the goals, the interventions, responsible party for the activities, a time frame to complete the care plan, and we also obtain a client acknowledgement, a signature or even oral acknowledgement is okay. In this slide, we present an example of how we document a care plan for case management services. Once the case manager activates the patient's care plan, the care plan is now attached to the patient's chart and is ready for periodic evaluation and monitoring. So I will now pass the baton to my colleague, Andrew Wilson, who will talk more about how we have structured our PrEP program and using what we have built in case management as a foundation. Andrew, take it away. Thank you, Akosia. So then let's first start talking about what our PrEP program is all about. The Texas Department of State Health Services HIV Prevention Grant funds Project Connect at Prison Health North Texas. And Project Connect is where our PrEP program is housed. The grant funds uh, programs that are structured to ensure that HIV prevention services are provided to persons at greatest risk of acquiring or transmitting HIV infections. These HIV services include outreach HIV testing and rapid linkage to care, community engagement and education, behavioral health, empowerment, and PrEP services, which is what we'll be highlighting in this presentation moving forward. People identified as having the greatest risk of acquiring HIV include Black men who have sex with men, Black women who have sex with men, Hispanic men who have sex with men, transgender persons, and white men who have sex with men. And that's people identified in our area, by the way. While the vast majority of our infections and outreach are in Dallas County, other counties served are those included in the Dallas Health Services Delivery Area. This includes Collin, Denton, Ellis, Hunt, Kaufman, Navarro, and Rockwall counties. So why is our program needed? Can't you just prescribe PrEP to people and send them on their way? Well, our program is a little more complicated than that. We have structured the program to increase patients' likelihood of avoiding acquisition and transmission of HIV. Our behavioral intervention specialists are here to help retain our patients in care by delivering multiple risk reduction counseling sessions and following up with patients for reminders on appointments and medication refills. We are currently transitioning from providing personalized cognitive counseling to the Respect HIV Prevention Counseling model. The behavioral intervention is in place as complementary to the biomedical intervention patients receive at the clinics as a tool for the patients to reduce their risk of acquiring and transmitting HIV. Additionally, our team is mobile and can meet patients where they are. All of our records are in the agency's electronic health record, 
which keeps all patient information together and allows us to communicate with other departments within the organization, such as medical providers about scheduled appointments and behavioral health counselors for referrals. The Project Connect PrEP program at Prison Health North Texas is a relatively new program, but it has experienced significant growth and evolution in its short duration. The first risk reduction specialist uh, for PrEP, which we now call Behavioral Intervention Specialist, or BIS, was hired in May of 2017. All patients were referred to one particular medical provider at one particular clinic. By the end of that year, we had seen 69 PrEP patients in a total of 153 PrEP sessions. Throughout the next two and a half years, we have steadily had those two BIS, but their caseloads are continually growing. While the numbers of patients in the program had more than tripled since the first year, uh, with 230 patients in the program by the end of 2019, we've additionally uh, been able to get more support from our clinics for our patients. Uh, Project Connect PrEP patients are now seen at all three of our sexual wellness clinics at Prison Health North Texas, as well as by an increased provider pool of up to seven different providers at this point within Prison Health North Texas. PrEP patients are referred to our program through a number of different avenues. Our PrEP team partners with our Project Connect core prevention team who does outreach HIV testing uh, to attend community events back when we did have community events. Uh, we educate people in the community about PrEP while we conduct their HIV testing and give them their results. Our outreach testing team is the largest source of referrals to our PrEP program. Patients that are tested from our team are assessed for risk and education about PrEP. Uh, if they are interested, we'll inform them, uh, we'll inform our PrEP manager, and he'll go ahead and um, reach out to the PrEP, the potential patient, and we'll set up an appointment with our BIS. We also have a number, uh, a team member that's currently stationed at the local health department's sexual health clinic. She'll see patients that receive either a positive or a negative result to their HIV test. For patients who have tested positive, negative, she'll educate them about PrEP and refer their patients to our program. Our agency also has three sexual wellness clinics that I talked about earlier that provide walk-in HIV and SCI testing, and they also refer patients to our PrEP program. To a lesser degree, we also get um, people who inquire about PrEP from our website, uh, from our field health advocacy team, and soon from our Prison Health North Texas research, research team as well. Approximately 64% of our patients are uninsured. PrEP services are available for patients with no health insurance who qualify for a patient assistance program, for patients who are underinsured who qualify for a copay coupon card, or for patients whose in-network lab provider is a subcontractor to Prison Health North Texas. Our BIS also assists program eligible and uninsured patients become enrolled in the health insurance marketplace during open enrollment periods. So by the end of 2019, we looked at where improvements in the program could be made. One clear area of improvement was to improve the no-show rates for Project Connect PrEP patients. From January 2nd, 2018 to December 16th, 2019, 162 patients had completed at least the first of three BIS sessions, but only 57 of those had made it all the way to completing the third session. So overall, we had a 23% no-show rate for PrEP sessions, and only 26% of our patients had completed the intervention by attending three or more sessions. This illustrated to us a need for more structured intervention for our program to give patients a reason to, to come back to complete their intervention, even after they've had their medication. To us, patients were finding that medication access was more helpful than having both the medication and receiving the risk reduction counseling from our team. So we needed to figure out a way uh, for these sessions to bring more value to our patients. So we turn to guidance from our states achieving together a community plan to end the HIV epidemic in Texas. This plan was developed in Texas by community leaders, advocates, and people affected by HIV from across Texas. It's intended to create environments and systems that will allow people to access the tools they need in order to thrive and also adapt systems and structures to make it easier for all people to access HIV prevention, care, and treatment that they need in order to, to sort of thrive. 
for us, that specifically means access to HIV prevention, us being an HIV prevention program. So in this plan, there's four areas that were especially pertinent to our PrEP program, which include promoting the continuum of care, collaborating across systems, addressing mental health, substance use, and housing, and providing culturally affirming services. Of particular interest to us was evolving and merging our current systems to create a status neutral system of HIV prevention and care. So people talk a lot about status neutral systems, right? So what does that mean exactly? Well, I think before we actually talk about what a status neutral system means, let's take a step back and look at what the current system looks like. Often we refer to our systems as being patient centered. Patient centered is always such a big buzzword in our field. But if you look at it, these systems really tend to be more disease-centered than patient-centered. So what I mean by that is uh, th that a patient gets diagnosed in HIV-positive status, in one of our, in, in one of the, which is one of the requirements to get access to our system of care. Most often, they enter the system of care for HIV-positive patients through combination prevention services, specifically HIV testing. So once a patient's status is known, they can then start connecting to other services, including uh, meeting basic needs like housing and food assistance. Often these basic needs are what the patient's priorities are in the first place. It has nothing to do with their HIV status. Even then, the majority of these services, like I said, are only available to patients living with HIV. We find that people who have increased vulnerabilities to acquiring HIV also have, are trying to get these services while trying to access PrEP, but they don't have access to these services. So instead, we're not, we're not being patient-centered. We're not serving the needs of all of our patients. We end up being disease-centered. We're only serving patients that are living with a particular disease. So that's what we mean by disease-centered versus patient-centered. Now, if you look at the, how a status-neutral framework uh, can look, this is how a patient will move through the system. This is actually more patient-centered, as you'll see. We start centering the needs of all those priority populations that we identified earlier. What are their true needs? What are their true priorities? Instead of only offering access to our agencies through positive HIV test results, we can open up access to services based on the patient's most pressing needs, such as housing, for instance. During this encounter, we also wanna start understanding the patient as a whole person uh, and, and what are their needs. We wanna start establishing a relationship and building rapport with the patient. This is essential to be able to successfully offer the patient uh, the support they need to maintain their health. That's the overall goal. Uh, by being truly patient-centered, we're respecting their priorities as an individual, regardless of what their HIV test results show. So as needs are identified, we start providing education uh, and resor about resources, and we start making referrals as necessary, all while engaging the patient in either the HIV prevention or HIV care continuum that you see here on the right of your screen. They'll get their test results. Uh, they'll get screened for either combination prevention or HIV care services as appropriate, depending on the results. Following that, again, depending on the results, we'll be ready and willing to start their antiretroviral therapy, their prescription. Again, that'll be PrEP for people with a negative result or HIV treatment for people with a positive result. Our goal then, regardless of your HIV status, is, um, is then to do ongoing maintenance and support, uh, including ongoing access to all these support services that were identified as needed by the patient. The goal for HIV treatment at the end of the day is viral suppression, while the goal for people on PrEP is adherence to PrEP, adherence to medication. So even though our goals are a little bit different, um, we can see that the, a lot can change the, the patient experience. Sometimes they, they experience system or environmental challenges that, stops, that will stop them from being successful in the continuum, regardless of which continuum they're in. But even if they disengage, if we were truly status neutral, we would be able to provide access to these basic needs, regardless of their, their status. Uh, for instance, if we can provide safe and stable housing to someone who's at risk of requiring HIV, safe and stable housing in and of itself is HIV prevention. And overall, is going to have an impact on a person's health. So this is what we mean by status neutral, and this is what we mean by actually being patient-centered. So let's just take a step back real quick. Uh, my colleague, Akosia, talked about our, um, I will call it superb case management program. 
We have a lot of systems and structures in place. Uh, and we have, I will say, spotless audits because my colleague won't say that. So we, we, take, we wanna take a look at what our case management structure is doing. And we wanna start taking a look at what the needs of our patients are on the prevention side of things. So K Prison Health North Texas case management provides pathways to support services for patients and gives them the best chance to be successful in the program. Of course, you gave great examples of how that happens. If we were truly status neutral, which I just talked about, our patients would have the same pathways to support services to give them the best chance uh, for success for medication adherence. So therefore, we took a step back, we looked at these case management tools and these processes that were discussed, and we try to figure out how we can modify and adapt them and adopt them for our PrEP patients so that one, our patients have the same opportunity to be successful as our case management patients. And two, our prevention staff have a similar structure in place to help them in their commitment to our patient's success. Moving forward, since our program is working off the status neutral premise now, uh, that people who are at risk of requiring HIV still have many of the same needs as people who are living with HIV, our team should assess patient needs in a very similar way that we're already assessing patient needs at the case management level. So case management, the program utilizes tools that assist in the development of a comprehensive and individualized care plan. This helps staff to, to better coordinate services required to implement the plan and, patients, uh, and patient monitoring to assess the effectiveness of the plan. So we've adopted some of these case management tools and we've modified some other ones. Um, two tools that we adapted specifically to fit our needs for BIS and the PrEP side of things were the acuity scale and the, case, and the care plans and the electronic health record. So we'll now take a look at how we were able to adopt and counter tools and screeners throughout the prep process and adapt some of those other tools. I'm gonna to go ahead and hand it off now to our program manager, Ismail Cruz. He's gonna talk about uh, how we were able to modify and adapt case management tools, build them in our electronic health system, and get our staff up to speed with a more case management-like structural to behavioral intervention. Thank you very much, Andrew and Nakosi for these introductions and a review of what the non-medical case management program is and also the PrEP program. As it was mentioned before, there were some uh, tools that we adopted and some others that we adopt into uh, our PrEP program. First of we were able to adopt a couple of case management tools without any modifications. The first tool we adopt are the encounter logs and notes. These tools help our team to identify key assessment areas. The behavioral intervention specialist documents all the contacts. This can be either a successful or attempts to contact the patient. The main purpose is to engage the patients in services or also to communicate with services providers regarding the patient services. Our behavioral intervention specialist identifies the encounter type, the encounter location, what was the topic discussed, the patient current progress, what are, the, what are gonna be the next steps? What referrals were given? And also what is gonna be the follow up on previous referrals? As you can see, the encounter node should be something clear, concise, and also relevant to the patient's care. As mentioned early, earlier, the substance abuse, mental illness symptoms screening tool is a 16 question screening tool for mental health and substance abuse conditions. If a patient is negative or the results are negative, the intervention is not required. However, if this is positive, <clears throat> excuse me, a referral is offered to our behavioral health program in-house, which is also a status neutral. Bristol Health North Texas patients have access now to our behavioral health services, regardless of their HIV status. The acuity tool or the acuity scale system is a tool used to objectively assess needs and barriers to care. This tool uses psychosocial patient characteristics and workload indicator or indicators to score patients from level one to four based on an acuity level. Some of the suggested case management levels are based on weighted system acuity measurements scores. For instance, Level one indicates that the, the case manager opens the files 
or open the file, but ongoing case management is not indicated. On level two, case management indicates just a client monitoring. Level three is a basic case management and level four, which is the most intensive case management provided. It is also important to mention that this approach will give the behavioral intervention specialists the ability to score their assessment, then establish what is gonna be the next step and what the standards of contact are for the coming behavioral intervention specialist sessions. It also allows the behavioral intervention specialist to assess the need for risk reduction counseling. You can see on this, on this part, a screenshot of some portions of our PrEP Acuity tool. Our PrEP program is currently piloting Acuity, Acuity scores with our patients to better understand what is the difference or what different Acuity levels means for the PrEP patients. So what is measured on our PrEP Acuity tool now that we adopt, we adopt this? Just about everything that is measured on uh, our system Acuity measurement Acuity tool for case management. Some examples are well, some examples of what we are assess are, for example, necessities, life skills. This concerns to food, clothing, skills related to activities of daily living, and also access to uh, household items necessary for daily living. We also assess for housing and living situations. So this is more specific to physical shelter, living environment, access to critical utilities. In this case, if a patient is facing concerns with the heat or electricity or water, we're able to refer them through, throughout the city programs. Then we also assess for insurance benefits. This mainly concerns to the patient's, patient's eligibility for an access to a private or even a public insurance coverage adequate. So this is to provide a continuum of care for medical services. This category also includes access to the PrEP antiretroviral medication through the patient assistance program. Or it can be also through the copay assistance program when this is applicable. Also assisting our patients to enroll into the Affordable Care Act when the enrollment period is open. The other two, or other tools that we adapt were some of the care plans in the electronic health record. Just like the non-medical case management program, the patient and the behavioral intervention specialist PrEP will actively work together to develop and implement the care plan. This care plan includes the same things that the case management program does include. For here is the description of what we identify on this case. As you may see, the patient reported having recurring STIs. And also you can see here are some risk reduction goals. In this case, the patient will incorporate prevention strategies that fear the lifestyle, including using condom during sex, condom negotiation with partners, and also practice using condom skills. As mentioned early, the care plan gives measurable guidelines to patients and behavioral intervention specialists prep for risk reduction sessions, medication adherence guidance, referrals, and also program compliance. It's important to mention that the big difference on this is that the main goal for non-medical case management program is to attain viral suppression. Compared to the prep program, the main goal is to attain a viral prevention. Now, to integrate these new tools into the electronic health record, we model the agency electronic health record guide, which is also used by the non-medical case management program. We create templates that will feed our process. We then work with our IT department to create templates into the electronic health record. Once these templates were ready, we conducted beta testing to ensure that our behavioral intervention specialists could familiarize themselves with these templates. We then needed to get our staff up to speed. So what we did is that we leveraged the non-medical case management user guide to educate our team. And also we conduct beta testing with our staff until they were comfortable using the new tools. 
We also conduct recurring one-on-one and group practice sessions to allow the staff to practice on test sample patients. Furthermore, we also review feedback, make adjustments based on concerns, and decided on a day to go live for our team to get a baseline accurately. Also to get scores for our patients, I have to mention that our team also continues to have on-demand immediate on-site assistance currently. So after we talk about adapting and adopting these tools, so here is how our prep program now fits into the larger prison health North Texas system now that we have adopted all these case management tools and processes. As you can see, our patients are referred from different avenues to our program, at which point we will assess their main needs. So they will receive risk reduction counseling, medication adherence, and follow up reminders from our behavioral intervention specialists. But not only that, but they are also, they are also now referred to a link and linked to other services to help provide more structure in their life and give them a greater chance to avoid acquiring HIV or even other STIs. In the search of obtaining better quality assurance, the program manager now will perform the following steps. A monthly review of completed care plans and processes notes. It will conduct a review of standards of contact with patients to ensure we are seeing the patients with high or with the highest needs for behavioral intervention. Also, we'll review accurate tools to ensure patients are self-sufficient to navigate the system, and mainly to ensure that the patients with low needs are able to maintain medical services only. This is important to mention as this will reduce the behavioral intervention specialist case loads now that we are obtaining more referrals. Some of the challenges that we had come across while implementing these tools include the fact that there is not a system in place for patients of PrEP, like there is a Ryan White program for HIV positive patients. As you remember, the Ryan White is a system that helps coordinate care between funded agencies. We also had to adjust our service delivery in 2020 due to the COVID-19 global pandemic. Unfortunately, this changed how we were able to meet with patients and provide them services. We also had turnovers at the behavioral intervention specialist level, manager and director level in 2019, which this contributed to some growing pains. However, after all these pains, in moving forward, we will continue to strengthen the relationships with our case management, case management team to improve our prep program by discussing and modifying tools and processes as needed. We will also integrate our homelessness management information system for patients that face housing concerns. And we will also continue to utilize the telehealth to increase patient convenience and also to decrease the uh, barriers to care and mainly to incorporate COVID-19 precautions. What questions do you have for us? <laughs>